Velkommen og god dag alle sammen. Uh, welcome back to the channel where we use actual ancient sources to speak about pre-Christian Norse magic. And today is a very special video because it is one of the rare times that an ancient source actually tells us how to practice rune magic. So we find a lot of mentions of magic from the medieval and ancient uh, sources, but they don't tell us exactly how to practice uh, any type of that magic. Um, and we also we find a lot of magic from later on in history that tells us exactly how to practice it, but uh, we're not sure whether these can be dated back to pagan times. So this is one of the very rare instances um, of pagan magic from pagan times that tells us exactly how to do it. So let's get into it. This is some rune magic that would keep you safe if someone was trying to uh, poison your drink. And uh, we see this a few times actually in the ancient sources, uh, little details in different places, but the most um, descriptive version comes in Egil's saga. Um, and uh, this is when Egil is a young man. When he's a kid, he's, uh, he's a real pain in the ass. He's a real bratty kid, always getting into trouble, and he gets into trouble as an adult too, uh, but actually becomes a great hero. Um, anyway, he, as he gets a bit older, he leaves Iceland and decides to live with his brother, uh, Turolf, and they go raiding, traveling, meeting with kings and friends all over Norway and Scandinavia and even England. Uh, one day they end up at a feast. Uh, I, it's, it's a really cool story. I'm not going to tell you everything that happened at the feast. That'll take too long. Um, but basically the host of the feast uh, starts out by hiding ale from Egil and his men. Um, he eventually serves the ale when the king shows up and then Egil doesn't like this very much. He starts talking shit the whole fest. Um, he's like, oh, you liar. The guy's name was Bard. He, oh, Bard, you liar. You had the ale all along and Egil just decides to constantly just keep speaking poetry and <laughs> lay insults to Bard the whole night. So Bard gets pissed off at this and he has his wife put some poison in Egil's drink um, and the Egil uh, knows this and Egil uh, carves some runes on his drinking horn then he cuts his hand and colors the runes with blood and he reads this verse um, and he and he stays uh, unpoisoned and safe and I'm gonna read the verse here really quickly I carve runes on this horn redden words with my blood I choose words for the trees of the wild beast's ear roots. Drink as we wish this mead, brought by merry servants. Let us find out how we fare from the ale that bard blessed. Okay, so um, that that's that's what we find it as, and that's a detailed description, but it doesn't tell us exactly how to cast it or, um, or what runes to use, but let's look at some other sources and we can find out. In Sigurdrifumal, in the Poetic Edda, this tells us quite a bit about it also. Um, uh, most of you probably know this story, when the hero Sigurd uh, goes, uh, kills the dragon and goes through the fire and wakens up the Valkyrie, Brunhild, and she gives him some mead and eventually starts talking with him about magic and uh, runes and giving some advice. So stanza 7, she says, Ale runes learn, that with lies the wife. Of another betray not thy trust, on the horn thou shalt write, and the backs of thy hands, and need shalt mark on thy nails, thou shalt bless the draught, and danger escape, and cast a leak in the cup, so, uh, for so I know thou never shalt see thy mead with evil mixed. Um, so here it's a pretty clear here. You're supposed to write on the backs of your hands and also on the drinking horn you carve some runes. Um, now on the backs of your hands, it is the need, uh, so the nouth rune uh, right here. And you mark it on your nails. Some people try uh, translate this as a, a nail. Some people translate it as uh, the nails, so like all of the nails. So who knows? If it's one nail or all the nail, but we know that the now the root is the one that's supposed to be carved there. Then you are supposed to bless the um, drinking horn. Uh, probably say a poem or some kind of prayer, just like Egil did. Which doesn't have to be his exact prayer, I'm sure. Just some kind of prayer to bless it. Then you are supposed to cast a leak in the cup. 
Um, now, some people translate this as to mean a leak of garlic, like you throw a, pe a bit of garlic in the cup. Uh, but uh, others uh, translate that as leak is just another name or, an, or abbreviation for the um, Lurger rune right here. And, and the younger Lurger or the elder Lagus um, uh, rune there. And that's supposed to be it. This yeah. seems like this is what uh, Egil did. And that was probably a pretty well-known example of rune magic at that time. Um, Egil at this time was probably still just a kid. He was probably 18 to 20 years old in the story. And he knew this. Um, and it was mentioned in one of the most famous poems of the time, uh, uh, So I think this is pretty clear that this was some well-known magic, a well-known magic spell uh, that most people would have known at the time. Um, and uh, that, that's about it. So this is one of the very rare mentions of pagan magic from pagan times. Um, our ancestors for sure believed in this. Uh, maybe you want to as well. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't recommend it though if you think uh, someone has poisoned your drink just just pour the drink out. <laughs> no, no need to risk that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool example of magic there. So that's about it. Vi ses nästa gång.